let's take a look at a potential meter. A potential meter comprises of typically is a one meter wire mounted on the meter room, and it's connected to an uh, it's connected to a battery, and there's a that and a galvanometer is connected to a jockey, which then is then there's the external circuit, which actually comprises of a galvanometer and as well as a jockey. So let's take a look at an example. So in this example here, assuming that this battery does not have internal resistance, then we know that the L1 plus L2, which is the length of the wire, which is directly proportional to the resistance across RAB, which is directly proportional to the potential difference across it, and in this case, uh, the EMF. And by locating the jockey in the correct position, such that the galvanometer gives a noun deflection, it means that the potential difference across AC must be equal to the potential difference across the across this battery with an EMF of E0. So in this case, L1 is now directly proportional to the resistance RAC, which is directly proportional to E0. The advantage of using the potential meter is to do away with the need of looking at ohms by directly to use a meter which is directly proportional to the EMF. So from this, we can work out an expression as such. We also want to point out that if the battery with the EMF E0 has an internal resistance, you will not make a difference to these calculations. The reason is because when the galvanometer has a noun deflection, there's no current flowing across in this part of the circuit. And therefore, because of that, the potential difference across the internal resistance is zero. So hence, Hence, this expression remains to be valid. Let us now take a look at another example. In the other example that we have, we're using exactly the same potential meter, but in this case, we are connecting it. We are firstly connecting it first to an EMF source where we know the EMF is 2.4 volts and then connecting to an unknown EMF E0. So in this case, it's quite clear that we can say that the 50 cm, in actual fact, is directly proportional to E0 while in the case 70 cm is directly proportional to 2.4 volts. And from there, we can work out that the E0 is 1.7. In another example that we have, we also could connect, we could also deploy the potential meter with also another external circuits. And both these circuits are connected via the galvanometer. And when the galvanometer points to a null diffraction, uh, when the galvanometer points to a null diffraction, when the galvanometer points to a null deflection, you will know that the R1 is directly proportional to L1 and R2 is directly proportional to L2. And with that, you could establish the relationship for your calculations. In this final example that we look at, we're able to determine the EMF and the internal resistance of an electrical source. Let's take a look. So initially, we will open the external circuit and allowing us to conclude that L0 is directly proportional to E0. Thereafter, we will close the external circuit. So in this case, the L1 is directly proportional to VR. And VR is actually equal to R plus R plus the internal resistance multiplied by the EMF E0. So with these two equations, we could actually divide them simultaneously and you'll be able to derive this relationship by knowing the value of the external resistance, we are able to con calculate the internal resistance. Okay, the advantages and disadvantages of potential meter. So there's no current drawn from the unknown EMF source. That is important because if you were to use a voltmeter, there will be some current flowing in the EMF source and the internal resistance, and factoring in the potential difference across the internal resistance, it will give rise to some inaccuracy. Second, results are dependent only on the measurements of length. That's dependent on the potential difference across the entire potential meter. And we could do so to improve its sensitivity by placing a real start to improve, to improve the potential difference per cm of the potential meter wire. Finally, it is a now deflection method. So the balance point can be found with high sensitivity are not dependent on the calibration of any measuring instruments. One of the disadvantage is, the, is that it is slow. And second, resistance wire may not be uniform due to wear and tear, and especially with the use of the jockey.
Now let us take a look at the wisdom bridge. For the wisdom bridge, it is connected as such and is connected by a galvanometer. And again, the resistance will be adjusted such that the galvanometer shows a null, null deflection. And if when the galvanometer shows a null deflection, it means the potential difference across A to B is the same as A to C, and the potential difference across B to D is the same as C to D. With that established, we are able to establish the relationship between each of the resistors in the wisdom bridge.